Hello everyone and welcome back to my greenhouse. The response for my video has been just so amazing. It is just beyond what I would have hoped for. And just as I promised, uh, with good response, I'm making a tutorial. And this here is going to be part one of my tutorial. I'm splitting it up into multiple parts because time-wise, uh, I can't fit the farm and the floodgate and the wiring and everything all into one video. And because when pistons finally come out, uh, it's going to make the water gate abs obsolete. So I still want the, the farm part to be relevant. So for this video, we're going to focus on the making of the farm. This part here. And how to make it ready for any automated system you want to plug into it. Uh, I'm going to show you how I did mine, but I'm also going to explain just some of the basic rules so that you can tweak it any way you want and hopefully even make it better. So I'm hoping that you will watch the tutorial and get some ideas and hopefully make something slightly better and make something slightly different and share it with me. So to start off I'm going to actually explain some of the concepts of water and how it moves so that you can uh, better understand it and better use it in your own. Fact 1. Water will travel seven spaces past the source block but it won't go any farther than that. Items you throw in the water though will travel over that edge and fall down. As well as seven spaces past the source block, it will also go seven spaces past where the water fell down. Do you notice it still goes the exact same distance. If you take off this last piece here, the water will fall down and will continue for another seven spaces past this spot we took out. Fact 2. Water will travel to the lowest point of elevation within five blocks of its source. Normally water will do this on a level field. With holes five blocks away from the source, the water will only travel towards those holes and will not travel anywhere else. Behind me I have a hole six blocks away and this is out of the range of the water. It could flow here if if it was all even, but it doesn't register this as being low enough terrain. It has to be within five blocks. If this hole was gone, the water would travel here. If we take another block off, making this only four away instead of five, the water will only travel towards this hole now. Step one is going to be finding a good location for your automatic wheat farm. What makes an automatic wheat farm automatic is the water that flows to collect all the crops. And since flowing water requires elevation change, you're going to probably want somewhere that's a little higher up than uh, ground level. Otherwise you're going to have to build a lot of dirt area. Another good thing to have is a lot of wide open flat spaces. Because your fields are going to be pretty big and once again you don't want to be building a lot of stuff you don't necessarily want. Um, on average, you probably want uh, maybe 20 wide, 25 long, something like that. Just pick an area that's going to be very conducive. You, you don't want to be building like in that hilly area over there because you're going to be spending a lot of wasteful time. I mean, you could, but it's not quite the most helpful spot to be doing it. All right, so after you pick an area, I've uh, chosen this spot and sort of cleared off the top there. Um, Pick where you want the center to be. And I'm going to pick right here. And now that I have a center picked out, uh, we'll move on to step two. The first thing we begin working on is the back wall where the water comes from. So we're going to walk a little ways from where we put our center block and just build us a back wall. It doesn't have to be any specific length, just make sure it's plenty long. You can always make it longer, shorter, later. Okay, now come back to the center, and from your back wall to the center block here, you got a trench, put water in it. This will be our center irrigation ditch. That sounded really weird, but that's where the water is going to water the crops from. Our next step now is to decide how big our fields are going to be. Since crops are only watered by water sources up to four tiles away, our fields can be no wider than eight blocks. 
I like to use seven, so I'm gonna use seven again. Once again, we're gonna dig out trenches. I'm gonna fill in with water. Now that we have our field boundary set up and we've started the irrigation ditches, we need to work on the water flow that will cover our fields. And I'll just demonstrate real quick that how far a single flow of water will cover a field. It, as you can see, it goes out pretty wide. The problem is that on the edges here, it doesn't go out very far. This could really limit the size of your fields. At least to start with. So using one water flow source per field is not going to be quite as efficient. If you use two, however, the shortest piece of water actually goes a little farther. And I think it looks a little nicer. If you go with using two water flow sources, make sure that there is an odd number of tiles between them. Alright? Let's do the same thing over here real quick. One, two, three, odd number, and plug. Alright, now that we have that set up, let's quickly mark off this back wall section here for where the water is going to be coming out. Um, leave this open right here for a door so you can get back here to do maintenance and stuff. And so we can build the uh, water gate, which will go right here. Right, so now we have this area marked off. Our next task is going to be making these four separate flow vents come from one single source of water that splits up four times. So the very first thing we do, whoops, create some pass back here for the water to flow. And then we're gonna section them off so that the water will only flow in these little paths we made. And then if we put water right here, right in the middle, which is why we need it to be odd, the water will split evenly and go down that side and it'll do the same thing over here. Okay, now we have it going from four to two, now we just need to go from two to one. So this is the spot the water is going to have to fall down into. Let's quickly mark that off. It's going to have to flow between these two so it splits evenly. So it's going to have to land right here means we're also going to need to make sure we have guiding support so the water doesn't just flow over the edges. And now, when water falls right there, it splits four ways from one single water source. It's exactly what we want. So quickly mark this off right here. And this is where we're going to have our water fall down into from our floodgate. We'll just quickly prettify this up just a wee bit. And take this block off. So we can walk down here. Alright. There we go. Now before we continue, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to seal off all these pipes so that they're not left open and you have a nice, pretty, solid rock face right here. So put your water in so that you can see where all the water flows. And so that you also don't accidentally block off the water. This way, if you put a block somewhere it doesn't belong, you'll see by uh, water flow being disconnected. And 
there we go. Nice and even. Our next step is figuring out how long our fields need to be. So to do that, we just uh, put the water in and see how far it goes. And as you can see, it goes to as far as about right there. So I'll just quickly take the water up, jump down, it won't hurt, and mark it off before the water goes away. Now we dig a little, whoops, dig a little trench right here. You only have to do one side for the moment. You can just copy the other side afterwards. And then just dig out this area in between, or at the end of it. Because this will be your next field. Now before we go any further, we need to work on this irrigation ditch right here. We can't have this water mixing with the water that comes up from over there. So what we're going to do is we need to lower this whole trench right here to be on the same level, or to be one level lower than this field right here. So start off, let's take that off and see if we put that there, this is going to cover the flow and that's not going to work. So what you need to do is actually take that block off there, then cover it, and it works just fine. So you can do that, take that little guy back, and now that the water's working right, we just cap this one off, just like we did the other one. And the same thing over here. Alright, so now this area right here is ready for watering. So let's uh, see how far this water goes. Same thing as before, put the water in. Wait for it to go down. See how far it goes. Oh, well, wasn't that just coincidental? So take the water back, come down here, and just start digging, just like before, right where the water depends. This will be your next field. So, like before, we dig this out. This time, for these irrigation ditches, since my water doesn't reach far enough, I'll just add some more. Because this water doesn't ever change, it's just static, it's always there. So we take that out. Make another trench here. And do the same thing over here. And put the water in. For your wheat farm, you can have as many fields that way as you want. I'm only using three, you could have four, five, six, twenty-seven, as many as you feel like you want to plant. But for the last one, the last field is going to be one longer because we want the water to stop instead of flowing onto another field. So where last time, we'd always chop off the last block the water touched. This time we're going to destroy all the blocks one past it. Like so. This way, when we throw objects in it, as our simulated wheat, they will get to the edge of the field, and they will drop off the edge without the water going along with it. And if you want, you can just pretty up these little areas right here. and get rid of that, these dirt placeholders we put in. Now that we've completed the fields for one side of our wheat farm, just copy it over to the other side and using the first field as a template. And when you're done, it should work and look pretty just like this. And all the water ending right here in a very nice straight line. So now we have the fields ready, we need to work on the collecting bit. And so we need to build a collection tray right here. 
And what this does is when all the items fall off the edge, all the wheat falls off the edge right there, they will land right here in this slightly lower area. This is going to have another water source here. But this is going to just convey all the items towards a center spot. By putting water at the edges here and the edge here, you can have all the items just head towards the center there, like this. Falls off the field, falls in the tray, or in the trough, and goes towards the center here. And everything's going to land and collect right there. In my wheat farm, Outside of this water trough, I had a two wide walkway and a wall. So I'm going to do that same thing here. You don't absolutely have to have it too wide, you can have just one wide and drop right there, but then you won't have any room for wiring or indicator lights or any of the other stuff I included in my room. Sort of like having a two wide walkway. Makes it feel a little grander, less cramped. There's the two wide walkway. I want to keep this area clear right here still. That way we have uh, room to work with the water collection part of this. Alright, so we have this part done. Now to work on the collecting area quickly cover these up. You could just do it like this and just have it come out here and have a collection tray like somewhere out here. But then you're not going to have room for control room so the way I've done it is you need the collection tray to be three blocks lower or the uh, water source for the collection to be three blocks lower. One, two, three. And it's going to come out this way and it's gonna go right here underneath the wall. What the? How'd you get in there? Silly chicken. Not dinner time yet. Just dig this out so I can uh, see what I'm doing. Alright, I like to use glass to uh, wall off my collection area so I can see the water coming and moving all the items. And if you remember right, water will travel seven spots past its source. So, source, one, two, three, four, five, six. This would actually be seven right there. What you want to do is you want to have your water conveyance right here to end right here, or right wherever you want it, because that way items will fall off in the collection tray. You don't want it to be flooding your house area or whatever like that. As that's done, you can just uh, block the rest of this off. Any way you want, you can put more glass in there, you can put cobblestone, I'm just using dirt because it's easy. And that is the collection area. So we just dig this out a little bit. And should be ready. Alright, now hopefully this looks a little more familiar. Just add a few of these, finish the touch off. And voila! We can cover this up too now. And there we go! So I went ahead and turned our dirt dugout into uh, something that looks almost exactly like what I had in my other greenhouse. All I did was um, replace all the wall here with cobblestone except for a few select spots where I actually put in wood just for good backing and I put all these torch spots indented one for the indicators. Along the floor I went and I put half step wooden planks all along here 
and right here is actually just the full size wooden plank one spot beneath the floor as is here and this is just showing you how I did it and I'd like to just thank Reported Opacity for being my very first sub and I want to thank everyone else who supported me because you guys are really great you gave me a lot of confidence and I'm um, sorry this took so long to get out just been having a bit of a rough time lately and you guys really helped out so thanks I'm gonna be working next on the part you're probably all hoping for is the Watergate part but I need to get this part out of the way first because this is the part that I wanted to work on first because I built it backwards last time and it was a huge pain so since I make a tutorial I want to make it easier on you guys get it well thank you once more um, if you enjoyed it tell me why tell me what I could do to make it better uh, tell me what you did to make it better